when we bought glass for the window we were constrained by budget and the budget was really really small I mean even though we're talking about mid 1980s here I think we had 1300 pounds budget for all materials which included the kiln that we had to buy the glass the lead the other tools that we didn't have um, and we managed to do to, uh, to do that but we had to be a little bit careful when it came to picking glass out and I have to say I didn't manage to get all the glass that I wanted um, I had to compromise somewhat but I think we did okay we used two suppliers I seem to remember so we used a supplier that just gave us um, modern glass modern manufactured glass and another supplier where we got some um, older glass from re uh, reused glass Victorian glass I suppose and um, you can see some of it here um, I think this blue glass here and these red round pieces here, I'm pretty sure they're Victorian um, fragments, um, Victorian flash glass uh, fragments there, as opposed to this more kind of swirly coloured glass, which is um, modern stuff. You can see the difference between the glass which already has the colour in it and then the glass that we had to paint. So for instance on the on the skeleton's foot and leg here, you can see the shading, that's, that's glass paint, okay, that's meant to represent the bones of the skeleton and you can see that if you got further, um, further up the skeleton there, the figure of Christ, the, the feet of Christ there, the head of Christ, the head of the angel, that's pieces of glass that had to be painted with glass paint, fired in a kiln, brought out, cleaned up and put into the, into the original design. Um, moving further over, again in the middle panel you can see some um, collections of different kind of glass. I like glass with imperfections in it, you know, I like to use the imperfections. This piece of orange stripy glass here has got this sort of, um, sort of fault in it, I suppose you could say, but uh, I like to use things like that. And you, you can see that um, in other parts of the panel. It's part of the, the art of the stained glass designer that you've, you, you've you kind of design around what you've got as much as buying in what you want to use for your design, if you like. That's the way I look at it anyway. Um, so this is glass as it was bought, and here's the, one of the feet of uh, Christ here, again with the shading on. This is glass paint done in a fairly sort of washy style. Um, and then further over, um, again, mainly mainly modern glass, although I think, this, uh, I think the, this purple glass is quite old from my removal. And then here, running right across, you've got these saddle bars. These panels are about two foot six high, so in the three main lights we've got nine panels, and when you fix the panels in, the panels get fixed into the stonework, you put them in grooves in the stonework, you then um, put cement in the grooves, and then when you, you wait for the cement to dry, and then you, you fix the saddle bars over the, the glass, or should I say you attach the glass to the saddle bars. You know where your saddle bars are going to go on your design, um, and what you do is you get pieces of wire and you solder wire onto the lead of the panel, okay? So the saddle bar sits in the what piece of wire and then you tighten the wires up with a pair of pliers and that tightens the whole panel. What you do is you draw the panel up to the, or almost up to the edge of the saddle bar and you can hear it tightening. As, 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 you, as you tighten the pieces of wire you can hear as if you're tightening the skin of a drum. The uh, secret is not to tighten it too much of course because then you get which you don't want. So that's why these windows are quite tight. The middle one is tighter than, hear the difference? And that's different again. But basically it's okay. You never get it perfectly solid and of course after 25, 26 years you get wear and tear and it will 